Hey guys, welcome back to my old tractor shed. Uh, I haven't said it yet in any previous videos, but none of my videos are intended to be how-to videos. And this video here certainly is no how-to video. I am no expert, I just, I'm just pretending today. Um, I'm waiting for some parts for, to, to do some additional work on the tractor. I thought, I gotta repair these fenders, so I may as well get at it. Uh, I did one yesterday just to kind of figure out my procedure. Uh, I'm gonna do this one today. I got a couple close-ups of this. I'll probably insert right about here. Um, the bracket that goes underneath has a, comes up, I'll have a picture of that as well. And I drew a white line on the bottom where I intend to make this first cut, but I'm gonna cut from the top just because it's easier. The bracket has a little piece of plate on the top and then it's attached to the fender. And what looks like happened is moisture has got up over there the years and it's rusted and it's swollen this up. Like I say, I'll insert a couple still images because I don't think that camera will catch it. So what I'm going to do is just take the plasma cutter and cut it out. And then I've got some plate. I don't know where I got this. Just some old plates. A little bit heavier than the fenders. Uh, I've cut it a little bit larger than what I'm going to cut this out. Then I'm going to slide it in and mark this with an orientation mark because I'm probably not going to have that square. I'm not trying to get it square. Um, and I'm going to try and butt weld this in. I did this one yesterday and it isn't too bad. It's not perfect, but you know what? When this tractor's in road gear going down the highway, well, that's going to look pretty damn good. Anyway, good enough for me. Um, I'd like to wear the respirator when I'm cutting. This plasma cutter does make an awful lot of uh, smoke and whatnot, but I can't see. I don't have burning glasses that are cheaters, so <laughs> I wear the cheaters underneath the burning glasses, and I was trying it yesterday with the respirators, and it just was not working. I'd rather see and... Uh, I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to go blind, so I, I need the burning glasses. Anyway, I'm just going to cut this, and then by that time, lunchtime or coffee time, um, I got the paint ground off the bottom, so I put the ground strap for the plasma cutter down there, and then I just got a little piece of angle here that I, I use as a straight edge, so let's cut this, let's make some smoke. Put on my smoking jacket. <laughs> tricky with the two glasses. Like I say, I don't need to cut this perfect because I'm going to fit the other piece in. And I got a couple pieces of plate under there so I don't burn my table too badly. Then I'm actually going to do is cut right beside where they've welded it in here and try and get rid of that, that other piece of plate. Um, I'm going to stand this up and I'll have to reposition the cameras. So I've got the fender positioned so I can burn through now and I don't have to worry about my plywood. Uh, nothing pretty about this. Plasma cutter is not the best for cutting rusty old welds and stuff, but I like it better than the torch. So I'm just going to cut this as best I can and then I flip it over and grind it and get it all smoothed out. So, um, get that other camera repositioned. Let's make some noise.
it's a little bit messy, but a um, little bit, a few minutes with a grinder and it'll be, and it's all just, it's just layers and layers of rust. Really difficult to cut with the plasma card, even with a torch. If you have two layers of steel together and rust between, it's a difficult thing to cut, but make some noise, make a mess. This here, it's not quite off, but I think if I just do that under there. The bracket's still perfectly solid, but yeah, it's just layers of crap here. Okay, I think for this, uh, put on a little bit better pair of safety glasses, headphones, clean them a little bit here, and then I'm just gonna grind a little bit, and then I'm gonna go for lunch, and let the air clear in my shop. Shop not too bad yet. Those safety glasses have cheater lenses in them, so it's kind of nice. Okay, I'm gonna be careful here. I think, it's only 11 o'clock. Okay, what I gotta do is I get this underneath and then mark it exact and then cut it a little closer. I wanna actually butt weld this in is what I'm gonna attempt to do. Uh, yesterday I flipped this upside down to put it in, but then that isn't gonna work. That isn't going to work very good for the camera. <laughs> but I don't know how else I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to flip this upside down. I'll rearrange the cameras. So the reason I put it on the floor is I'm able to put my foot here on the outside and push there to, to kind of pull this up a little bit. So I've got room to slide this, to slide that under a little bit. Just like that. Okay, let's go back to the top now. All right, so I've jiggled that little piece of plate around a little tiny bit. Um, this edge here, I've actually got uh, just about lined up perfect. So I'm just gonna have to mark the other three sides. And as I'm welding it and putting it in place, I can use the grinder with a real thin disc just to uh, trim it if I need to. So my goal here, I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna recut that with the plasma cutter trying to leave the black line. So let's get set up for that. I forgot to mark which way that was supposed to go. So now I gotta figure that out. But I think I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna let the smoke clear. I'm gonna go have some lunch and a coffee and I'll bring you guys back. See you in a bit. All right guys, back after lunch. I've done a little wee bit of grinding on this and wiggled around a little bit. I got a couple of those um, triangle welding magnets in the bottom holding it. The trick here, well, I don't know if it's the trick, but the way I'm gonna do it is um, I try and weld a little bit here and then a little wee belt here, and then I just keep tapping it with the hammer. Um, I believe the goal here is to try and get the two pieces perfectly lined up. I'm not so worried about uh, waviness. I can take that out later. I got a couple of low spots on the one I did over there. A little bit of filler. But anyway, I don't want there to be a big lip. Uh, that, that's too much grinding. So right here where I got this mark, um, that's actually perfect. This side here, I've got to get this to go down just a few thou. But I'm going to weld that one first, and then I'm going to just kind of work around moving half, three quarter inch at a time, and uh, tapping that down. So let me get my smoking jacket, my helmet, my gloves.
same thing. I don't have cheater uh, glasses in my helmet. Uh, I was talking to my wife this morning at breakfast. Need to uh, make a trip to the welding store. I wear the cheater glasses inside. It's a pain in the arse. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention, as soon as I, as soon as I put that weld, I want to get it cool. I don't want this metal to start moving all around. So I want to try and get this other side. It dropped a little wee bit there. It was a little too high. I want to get that side flush and tack it, and then I'll just kind of work my way around. I'm going to try and push that magnet up. Right there. It's just very, very delicate. My gap there and my gap here, both sides here look pretty good. <laughs> it dropped on me a little wee tiny bit. Okay, right there. Now, it's just a matter of tapping. You want to get it as close to, close to flush as you can. I sometimes have a little, uh, just a little straight edge I can look at. This is pretty good right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little wee bit of, whoops. Hey, when I do that, now the wire's sticking out. I'm going to put a little wee bit there. my magnet. Don't need it now. That's perfect right there. Blew a little hole there so I'm going to have to turn the voltage down a bit. Let's try and get a couple on this side. Um, yeah. There's the other magnet. That's good. Turn down voltage down a little wee bit. And I'm not wearing gloves while I'm welding. Um, I gotta feel too much. So I think this is gonna be I'm trying to decide how I want to film this. I think this is gonna be a little wee bit too much for, for time lapse. Um, and I'd like to turn my heat back up and turn my tunes back up. So I think I'm going to shut these cameras off, save some flashcard, and then I'll, I'll bring you back. Uh, this is a slow process. So, I'll, you know, you got to weld, then you got to cool it, and then you got to play with it. I'll bring you guys back, uh, see how long this actually takes me. And uh, we'll have a look at it when I'm done. Welcome back, guys. Uh, when I was tacking this second patch on, I glanced at the clock and said, well, let's see how long this is going to take. It's actually been about two weeks. Uh, ran out of MIG welding wire, and we don't go to town very darn often. Anyway, got some MIG welding wire a couple days ago. Uh, finished welding this here patch on, and uh, it's not bad. Uh, the first one I put on, I had put the patch in the press, and I'd put just the slightest of curve on it. Um, in some respects, it's, it's better than this one, although it has a couple of little waves to it, but I'll be putting some filler on there. And there was a, a quite a damaged spot here where it had actually been welded at one time. Um, I tapped it all down and welded that. So that's it for this fender for now. I'm gonna get the other one done. I have three spots on it to repair. The two, the two spots where it's um, um, 
the rust had bulged it up, and then there's quite a damaged spot in the center. Something must have fallen on that, that fender at one time, and it actually has a, a crack, and it's rust or whatever. So I'm going to cut, I'll cut three spots out on it. Um, I don't think I'm going to videotape all that, but I'll, I'll take some still in images, and I'll add them as I go, and then... Uh, then we'll look at getting some, some filler and some primer and whatnot on these fenders. And I have a few wrinkles, I have a few wrinkles down the other end of this fender that I'm going to try and get out with a hammer and a dolly. But uh, yeah, that's that patch. Ugh. The actual welding time and grinding, uh, maybe, I don't know, half hour, 40 minutes, whatever. Really wasn't paying attention. Anyway, I'll get the other one done and we'll bring you back. Stay tuned. All right, guys, I've got this fender number two uh, repaired. Um, the first uh, hole, or the first patch, turned out not too bad. I got a little low spot right there, but not bad. Well, a little bit there as well, which is pretty much the way they all, they're all they all turning out. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that one. The center one here, I changed my mind and I decided not to cut out a big patch. There was actually a hole drilled over here and there was a couple cracks and we're getting into that other curve and I, uh, I certainly didn't want to deal with that. Um, there was a, quite a large crack along here and this was all down. Um, I hammered and dollied that a little bit. I got a little bit more work to do here. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to try and put a little bit more weld in there. But anyway, um, if it turns out that that, when I start putting filler and stuff on it, if I'm not happy with it, I'll possibly cut a patch out there, but I have another plan. The third one over here, same thing as the other one. I got a little low spot right there, and uh, I might have to top this down. I think that's high right there, but uh, when I get a little closer to, to putting some filler and whatnot in here, I may play with them a bit more, but um, I don't know what order I'm posting these videos, and certainly don't want to, no spoilers or anything. I am working on several things here at the same time, and there's Getting to be quite a collection of parts that looks like I'm going to need. Um, and I have a line on a 510, which is one model. I don't know, there was a 310, a 510, and a 710. I've uh, been looking on the parts manuals, and a lot of these parts are the same. Um, I had a quick glance at this tractor a few months ago, and I think the fenders may actually been in better shape than these. So I'm not going to go too much further on these fenders until I go back and have another look at this tractor and see if I can purchase it for some of the other parts that I need. But, uh, but yeah, this isn't bad. I mean, I said this earlier, going down the highway and road gear, this will look just fine. So uh, if, it, if I do decide to carry on with these, I'm going to put a little more well. Actually, I might do that today. i got everything all set up here. Um, a couple low spots there I'm not happy with. And uh, then I think I'll just set these fenders aside until I decide what I'm doing. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. Appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know the YouTube crack. Like, subscribe, share, click that little bell, leave some kind of comment, whatever. If you want to help me out at all. If not, that's fine. It's, I appreciate your time. Appreciate you guys watching. And uh, we'll see you next time in my old tractor shed. Ciao.